Whoa, whoa, whoa. Stop right there. This channel is not intended for kids under the age of 13. So if you're under the age of 13, please leave. Hey everybody, Arthur here with another unboxing video. Today we have Mezco's Rumble Society Atticus Doom and it comes in that typical Rumble Society style packaging with the Rumble Society skull and then the gold emblem which is magnetized. So you just open this up revealing that awesome artwork of Atticus Doom and then of course you just slide out this insert. If I can get my hand in You got all this little tissue paper, the one twelfth care, but here we got the figure and let's get him out of the package. Like every other Mezco, we get that baggie for all the accessories and goodies. When it comes to Mezco figures, you know you're going to get a stand and this one has the Atticus Doom art from inside that comic, which I'm so glad they went with this artwork instead of the one that we saw when you opened the box because this artwork looks awesome. I got some weird like smudging going on here, a uh, little bit on the shadow of uh, Cthulhu, and there's a little bit of a scratch. So I don't know if this thing was dinged around, tossed around, or whatnot, but still, a really cool stand um, with the artwork. I almost wish that Mezco made a little bit smaller stand so you could actually utilize these with all your Mezcos, but with me having limited space, I got to pretty much, you know, be very picky on which ones I can use the stand with because these are pretty massive. Then you also get the dynamic flight stand type of stand that pops right in. Now besides a normal figure stand, we do get a stand for some magical effects. Atticus comes with a pair of fist hands equipped. We get a pair of open palm sort of casting jazz hands. Atticus comes with a hand to use for his cane and a gripping hand. Now we start getting into some of his effect hands. And he does have one that looks like it's just charred. It has like a translucent yellow. Uh, and it just looks super wicked. Now with that burnt hand, you equip that fire effect. And that really completes the cinder palm. And what the cinder palm does, it allows Atticus to summon souls from the lake of fire. To communicate with and to raise dead for a brief time and it's just cool to have so much lore with such a cool looking figure and i'm a big hp lovecraft fan and the fact that he is pretty much almost like a character that was inspired heavily by it i was like this is a must-have figure but that cinder palm is ridiculously cool and definitely just having him on a, on a shelf with this going on it looks badass Another left-handed effect that we get. He's going to be casting and doing a lot of these effects with his left hand. And uh, we get the Medusa hand where each finger is a snake, which is awesome. This hand is to induce paralysis and turn their enemies into stone. So he's, he's a pretty powerful character. I love the paintwork on it. It's nice and glossy. Got the different tones of green. Even on top looks pretty awesome when it comes to... The different types of uh, green and gloss. And the fingers are pliable. But look at those little snake heads. Another hand that he could turn his left hand into. And this could fit technically on both hands since it doesn't really have a thumb. Um, granted, this I guess could be a thumb. But either way, it could fit on both hands. But again, a lot of the casting, shape shifting, I would assume would be more with the left hand as that seems to be the theme here. But we got his nebulous claw. And what they say about the claw is that it's able to cast bursts of synchrotron radiation siphoned from the crab nebula. The claw can also grasp, crush pretty much any mystical and non-mystical object. So you got yourself like the jaws of life right here. And it's done super well. The paint job, the texture on it is phenomenal. It is articulated as well. So you can open and close the claw. Here we have Atticus equipped with his tendril arms. And the tendril arms look awesome. They're painted well, sculpted well. Got some wash on it. Got a little bit of sculpted barnacles. I think that's what these are called. And they're all crusted up on both arms. And they look great. Technically, 
he should be using the tendrils only on his left arm. But since there's no thumbs and it's my figure, I decided to equip him on both arms just to see how they look. And they look great. When it comes to Atticus, the, the tendrils actually have a name. The tendrils are actually called the Cthulhu Fraction. And it's Atticus's most potent and taxing magic because it actually summons the part of the Great One. And this is done by teleporting a small part of Cthulhu to his left arm, allowing Atticus to wield the powers of the Sleeper of Ralea. I, I mean, I'm probably mangling it, but I'm reading it through the <laughs> through the comic that it came with. But yeah, he summons a part of Cthulhu into his arms and, you know, can utilize some power, which is pretty awesome. Now to go with those tendrils, we do get a alternate head, and this is called the Mantle of Madness that allows him to basically turn himself into a mini Cthulhu, and it's got some really well done sculpt work. His eyes are red, got all the tendrils in the front. I mean, when you see this, you're like, dude, that's Cthulhu, and it's just done really well with a nice glossy finish, giving it almost like a little bit of a slimy look, got the vein work on the top. They nailed this head sculpt. And this was actually a selling factor for me. Like, th this sold me on the figure. Once you start bu busting out some Cthulhu stuff, I'm like, I'm a sucker for uh, Lovecraft. And, man, they nailed this head sculpt. Atticus also comes with a little smoke ring. And you can use this however you want. Um, lay it on the ground or whatever. But it is designed to go around his neck. Here we have Atticus with his smoke scarf on. <laughs> he has a scarf on top of a scarf and that red scarf underneath. I am not undoing that because there's no way I'll be able to fold it back the way it came from the manufacturer. So yeah, he's going to be dealing with smoke scarf on top of fabric scarf. But still a pretty neat effect to have. And you can really use this effect however you want. Now Atticus's walking cane is definitely one of my favorite accessories that he comes with because it's painted and sculpted super super well got like this skull on there all the sculpted in like runes and spells and stuff look almost like it's bleeding and it looks just wicked now this is actually called the goblin shalala <laughs> again i'm probably mangling it but it's stating that a walk it's a walking stick carved of wood from the dark forest and mounted with the skull of the goblin at Stelbink. The skull still contains the goblin spirit. The shaft is covered in spells that bind Stelbink and his magic to the cane. The cane has magical properties that are connected to the magic of nature, such as fairies, elves, and of course goblins. And Stelbink is usually sleeping, but when awoke is quite a crusty complainer. My favorite accessory that Atticus comes with is the Tamna Zaraza book. And uh, this is a grimoire full of knowledge about some uh, pretty much a subculture tribe that traded and dealt with the eldritch demigods and all that crazy stuff. Uh, you know, lots of lore, like I said, into this figure and accessories. But look at the sculpt work, paint work, the detail. This is a beautiful beautiful piece now what's crazier is it opens up right but when you open it up you sort of see that. each page is different like it has individual art and all this crazy stuff in there like nothing is replicated in here each page is different like they just made a mini <laughs> mini book and it's crazy let's see if i can actually zoom in here so you guys can really see some of this stuff that i'm talking about but yeah look look at this some wild stuff <laughs> just sort of skipping through it ah yeah look at all that This is just a awesome, awesome accessory. Atticus does come with some flame effects that pop into his eye sockets that look really cool and definitely can take the character to a different style and you can just have one in there, but they're pretty easy to take in and out. I do like the empty eye sockets myself, but the flame effects are really nice. 
Here I have Atticus just raging out, casting his magic and spells and stuff. Um, and the spell effects look great. I like the whole, like, Cthulhu. I probably have this thing upside down. But either way, it's like that octopus squid look, Cthulhu look. Then you got all these magical runes, you know, giving off that vibe of, like, Doctor Strange and stuff like that. But it is super cool. And I did take his trench coat off for this one because the effect pieces, uh, they can attach like so um there's a ball joint here so you can move it around and there's actually a hinge so you get a lot of range and motion when it comes with the the spell effects when it's on him atticus doom is super fun i have him equipped with his little portal like magic effects like he comes with so much stuff it's it's ridiculous but you can have him like punching into a portal looks like a rick and morty type of portal but he's punching through and then you can have like the 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 claw coming through on the other side and that is something that is really cool because you got this display that you can mount the stuff onto now the last little effect thing you get is this little translucent piece and you could sort of slide the like the spine of the book in there but i'm not pushing it down too much i don't want to scratch it up but i guess you could do some levitating with the book um, but if you're doing fig photography, you're going to have to edit the crap out of this because it's a lot of plastic. You're going to have to edit out or you might want to make your own little levitating stand for this book. Taking a look at Atticus and uh, you could do pretty much what I did with Vapor with this hoodie. You could take his hands off. I, I don't have him posed the greatest, but you could pretty much tuck his hands in like his hands are in his pocket of his trench coat. Now, his trench coat is heavily wired. We got wires going down here. The actual belt is wired. Wires all the way down at the bottom. So you can really get this trench coat posed up how you would like. And taking it off and putting it on is pretty easy. You got to remove the hands. It's also another reason why I had his hands off. But yeah, the pocket thing is a cool way to do it um, for those nice noir shots that you want to do. So the trench coat just comes off like so. Um, articulation wise, this guy pretty much has that, uh, um, honestly it's, it's the doc nocturnal buck. It feels like, cause he is a little bit smaller. Here we get an up close look at Atticus and he got his turban. He has the little Leviathan particle there with the flame around it looking super cool. But what's cool about this as well is his turban comes off revealing a nice glossy, gross looking brain there let me try to focus it in here so you guys can actually see the philosopher's oculus he's got like a little like eyeball type of charm indented into his brain and the brain i do believe comes out it does so you can just take it off and then you can push this so you take make a big old hole in his brain but you got the little uh philosopher's oculus as a separate piece it just looks really cool little gold ball with texture on it now with his turban back on the skull is beautiful i love this design of the skull the wash the actual weathering on it it's got sculpted in little lines and cracks it's a really cool stylized skull that stands out from all the other skulls that we've got, the turban has a nice dry brushing throughout. Just a really, really cool, just a, just a cool look. Like, I would never have thought that I would have bought this figure. Actually, I was going to pass on this figure. And then the more reveals came out, I was like, okay, I got to get this figure. His scarf is nicely tucked into this little vest. The vest almost looks like something we've seen before. I think almost has like the same buttons as uh, Nosferatu almost. Could be wrong, um, but I, I could have swore we've seen these buttons before. But either way, got this nice little vest, got the red little sweatshirt underneath, and we got a nice little shiny back of the vest. So they made it very vest accurate. And uh, the sweater looks cool all in the red. We've got these gray, like, khaki pants. we got the, well, I guess they're gray pants. I guess they wouldn't, if they'd be khaki if they are khaki, but yeah. Uh, we got the belt that's sculpted in there. And they painted even the belt loops gray to match the pants. And then we even get into his little booties. He's got some little little side zipper booties going on. 
<laughs> but very cool. Like, this figure is a really cool figure. And one thing that is also nice is that when you're dealing with this figure... Uh, all of, I, I kept showing a lot of his, his left hand and all that stuff. But his right hand, all of his right hands have this cool eye on there. And it's just really cool to see that. It's just... It's just nice to have a figure that's just not coming all with like all the typical Gomez hands. A little bit of uniqueness went into this figure, and I'm pretty happy with it because all the hands have like a gray dry brushing to dirty them up a little bit. A very, very awesome, awesome addition to anybody's Rumble Society collection. When it comes to Atticus Doom, this figure has blown me away because of all the accessories, the fun, the posability, the really the fig photography display potential is just, it's ridiculous with this figure. I love all of his accessories and honestly, if you didn't get them, I mean definitely try to pick them up now before his price goes up because this is definitely one of the better Rumble Society figures that we have received in a while. Uh, I mean, when I got Hawk P40, I thought it was going to be good, but it was a disappointment. This figure I almost passed on, got it, and it has blown me away. It is a amazing looking figure, and it definitely will have amazing shelf presence uh, on, on your shelves or just like when you're doing figure photography. This thing is phenomenal. It's a great piece. So, you know, round of applause for Mezco. Because they, they took a, their own IP and made an amazing character, in my opinion. Um, but that sums up my unboxing and review of Mezco's Atticus Doom. If you guys are enjoying my content, go ahead and hit that like button. If you're wanting to know when I post up a new video, hit that silver bell notification. And make sure you guys, if you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button. As it helps the channel evolve and grow. And I want you guys to go ahead and check out Toyco Toys and Collectibles. All the links are going to be down below. And most importantly, I want you guys to have the best luck hunting. Keep on collecting and have a beautiful day.